Once again, we're back looking at the periodic table and we want to make a video about a metal that we should have previously made a video about. When you look at top of the table, you could see the number 25. Number 25 is manganese. You shouldn't mistake manganese with magnesium. Magnesium is towards the left and its initials are MG rather than MN. But let's get back to manganese. Manganese is also different in another way. It's called a transition metal. And when you look at the, this part of the periodic table, these are all transition metals. If you search transition metals, there's a whole lot of different types. You got metals like copper, iron, nickel, zinc, and many, many more. You can most likely find manganese alongside iron. And that's why in iron mines, there's also manganese. When you remove manganese from an ore and purify it, just like every single other metal, it turns into a silverish metal, but it's more brittle and it's not really good by itself. Back in the day, they were very familiar with manganese, but they weren't sure what to use it for. Fast forward to the year 1770, humans still don't know that manganese is an element itself. That all changes until Johann Glauber realizes that manganese is its own element and separates it from itself and names it manganese for the very first time. Manganese is a Latin word that comes from the word magnet. Even though manganese is not magnetic itself, but its salt is, and that's the reason this name was chosen back in the day. In our video about zinc, we mentioned that zinc is extremely important for the human body. That goes the same for many other metals, including manganese, but much, much less than the other metals. Doctors say too much manganese in your system could damage your nervous system. And if this is a chronic condition, it could actually give you brain damage. Usually between people, there is not a shortage of manganese in your body. And if you have it, it's most likely genetic. But just like every other supplement or every other element, you have supplements you could take to fix that. One of the signs of low manganese is that your skin breaks up easily. You have too much dry skin. And when it breaks up too easily, you could easily cut it and start bleeding. But this doesn't mean if you have dry skin or you keep getting cuts, that means you have low manganese. It's very important to talk to your doctor before taking any supplements. In the beginning of the video, we mentioned that manganese is very brittle and it could easily break. So by itself, the metal is useless. So you can't just make a hammer with it or a tool because it will break. But if you use it as an alloy, it's one of the most useful alloys in the world. When you mix manganese with iron, you get one of the strongest forms of steel. Of course, you have to mix other elements like carbon as well. But zinc makes it stronger. It also makes it more resistant, especially in applications where there's a lot of movement, like gears. The same way manganese helps our bones get stronger, it also helps steel get stronger. More than 90% of this element is used in the steel mill factories. When you mix carbon and manganese with iron, the steel will get five times stronger than before. That's why you see this application on metals that stick to one another and always move against each other. Some historians believe back in the day, especially in the military, the blacksmith would mix manganese with iron to create a stronger mixture for their swords. But unfortunately, no sword has been found where we can melt it down and check if there is manganese inside it. But they strongly believe it because there was always manganese in an iron ore mine. Another important thing this element does is that it makes photosynthesis possible. The same process that turns carbon dioxide into oxygen is photosynthesis and this is not possible without manganese. And that means there is no more oxygen available. So 
Manganese is very important for life. The most important part of manganese is that photosynthesis is possible. It makes human bones stronger and it also creates extremely strong and durable steel. If we didn't have high strength steel, most of the things we have today wouldn't be possible, including skyscrapers and bridges. Now in most wastewater plants, manganese is used to eat up the organic matter inside the water. Long story short, in wastewater plants, in a body of water where there's a lot of organic material, they add manganese to it and that destroys the oxygen. When you destroy oxygen, every living thing in that body of water will die. And that's one of the many ways they treat the water and put it back into nature. And that gives manganese another point in how important it is for our everyday lives. You can find manganese in a lot of different foods like almonds, wheat, greens like lettuce, and tea leaves. So every time you're drinking tea, you are taking in manganese, copper, iron, zinc, magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. Basically, when you drink one cup of tea, you're taking in the entire periodic table. But that was a joke. You're intaking a very low amount of these. That's actually good for you. Even though more than 90% of the manganese is used in the steel mill, it's also used in other industries, like lithium ion batteries. In a lithium ion battery where lithium, nickel, and cobalt is the main factor, they mix a little bit of manganese with the nickel and cobalt, and that makes the lithium ion battery more high performance. In terms of chemistry, it's also used in fertilizers. They add manganese to make the photosynthesis even better. Just like every other element that you could take and it's healthy for you, you can find manganese supplements. And if someone has manganese deficiency, they can take it. Since we're here, let's look at the market as well and see how much it is. When we are recording this video, the price of manganese is $2,600 per ton or $2.60 per kilogram. <laughs> 